it's really important to, for for students to see that it's it's possible. You can make a life as an artist, not not yeah. just keep it as a side hobby. Yeah, of course. I think that's important because growing up, that's really like the the image you get that comics is a hobby, but it cannot get into a, something professional or even lucrative in, in any way. But sometimes it can. Hello, and welcome to the Pathways Podcast, where we explore different careers in the Quebec City region. I'm your host, Susanna Tang, from Voice of English Speaking Quebec. Today, I'll be speaking with multidisciplinary artist Anthony Chabonneau Grenier about his work as a cartoonist and illustrator. You can find samples of his comics in the literary magazine Planche, as well as in a compilation of haunted ghost stories called Les Cinq Endroits Les Plus Hantés au Québec. I don't know about you, but I'm always interested in a good origin story. How did his interest in art begin, and how did he know that this is what he wanted to do professionally? I always been uh, drawing, like since very little child, and uh, I will always bring my pens with me. So no matter where I was, I could always like get my pens and paper out and just like drew. So it was it was very my my way of expressing myself as a young kid. And it always uh, stuck with me. And uh, when I was a teenager, I was reading a lot of comics, drawing a lot. And uh, my parents had the good idea to uh, subscribe me to a, a comic class. Uh, it was at the Maison Jaune in, here in Quebec. I had a very good teacher, Michel Giguère. And I think that's really where I really got the, um, the, the thing for comics. I, that's really when I... I, I um, I did my first real comics and uh, my teacher really showed me like everything that was possible to do in, in this art form. And that's maybe the first time I said, yeah, and that's, that's the thing I really want to do. So I'm just curious, what were the first uh, little drawings that you were doing when you were a little child? Do you remember? Yeah, <laughs> there, there was a, a couple of it. I, I started by doing like, I think when the first one I can remember, I was doing like people who got hurt. Uh, falling down the stairs or, fall, or having like terrible accidents because uh, I like uh, drawing like little plasters and uh, and bump on the head and uh, and little like cute scars and everything. So I started with like those weird, weird little drawings. <laughs> That's really good. That's actually really, really good. I'm wondering, so like as we're talking about drawing right now, um, do you have some advice about how to learn how to draw? Mm, yeah, maybe. I think um, some things that may help. Well, at first, I, I would recommend taking maybe some drawing lesson. It really helps uh, for the basics. And once you get the basics uh, right, you can just like the best way to to get better is is practice. So and try different stuff. So. Uh, um, uh, real life portraits can help like uh, and I say portraits but I mean anything you can just go outside with a sketchbook and try to draw houses or cars or uh, people or just like landscape urban landscape and somehow it will improve your drawing also the more you try stuff uh, you can also try to emulate the artist you like so uh, take pictures you, you like, but not like just um, by putting a, a sheet over the drawing, but just by trying to do it in your own style, trying to do it. And that's, that's how you progress. Because when you draw those things, you, you're confronted to some like drawing problems and the way you will try to solve those problems will make you a, a better drawer. So I think uh, artists kind of have their own uh, unique yeah. style or unique way of doing things. How do you, how would you describe your style, I guess? Mm, it's always hard to describe my style. Uh, it's, it's close from a um, uh, Belgian, um, I, I don't know the English name, clear line, I think, like uh, Air, uh, RJ Tain Tain and stuff like that. When you do a clear black outline and you have like a, a kind of a, simple style of drawing yeah it's really close from it's more from uh, of an uh, european style uh, kind of cartoon drawing 
No, I think that yeah. helps. I think that helps. <laughs> I think it's very hard, it's very hard to describe a, a drawing style. Uh, I want to dig in a little bit more about your schooling. So, what did you study past high school? And um, how did it help you with uh, your career now? Well, you know, um, I always knew I wanted to work in something creative because from a really young age, that that's really what got me going, what was uh, motivating me. So uh, when I got out of high school, I wanted to be an architect because it sounds to me like a great creative job and it involved drawing. So that was that's what I was going for. but. Uh, I went to Cégep in uh, art and literature, so I got to uh, try a different kind of arts. I also uh, got to read different kind of books. And uh, somehow at this point, it was really like the literature that stuck with me. So I did all my uh, university uh, years in literature after that. Uh, first and uh, second uh, degree studies in literature at Laval. And, uh, but all those times uh, that I was uh, studying there in literature, I continued to draw. I was still doing comics. Uh, so it was always sticking with me, even though I was uh, studying something else. And I guess uh, they, they, they both came to work together because, you know, uh, uh, it's it's both there. They're both narrative arts. So it's just two different ways of telling a story. And when you write, it's you 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 tell a story with words, and when you do comics, it's both with words and uh, images. So it's pretty close, and I guess that's one of the things I like most about comics. They're they're close to the way you your brain thinks. We we think with both words and uh, uh, pictures. So comics is like just a, an assemblage that's very close to uh, to the way we think. So that's maybe why it's my favorite way of telling stories. So after my uh, my studies, that's where I started to work more on illustration and comics. Uh, actually, I did my uh, not my uh, I did my memoir on uh, on comics also, which is pretty rare in literature studies. But my my director is stuck with me with that, and it was very great. Um, and yeah, so now I I would say it, it helped me to think also a lot about the text when I'm doing comics, but uh, mainly about the story to give a, a lot of importance to the story and to think what I'm gonna tell with the words and what I'm gonna tell with the picture. Next, I asked Anthony some questions about his work habits. You might be surprised how much time and effort it takes to complete a project from start to finish. I'm kind of wondering about the artist's work schedule. Like, what is that like? Because it's not as typical, I would think, or maybe you're going to tell me it is as a nine to five job. No, how does it? Actually, it's not. I, I cannot think about like typical day at work because I think there's no typical day at work. Uh, first of all, maybe because I do a lot of stuff, like not just uh, illustrations. So depending on the project I'm working on, uh, the day will be completely different. Sometimes I uh, I do like, uh, sometimes I work on illustrations, sometimes comics, sometimes uh, I prepare because I also teach comics sometimes. I do concept arts. I go to schools to do uh, drawing and comics activities with kids. So all kinds of stuff, really. Um, and depending on that, the, the, the day will be completely different. But uh, I work mostly from home. I have like all my uh, all my uh, uh, artist material uh, in in my desk. So I, I guess if I have to say what what the normal day will look like, uh, normally I just like work starting around like uh, nine, and I start with some doodling, just some like you know, just to get inspiration, just to get the 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 end going. So just working on almost anything, just like free drawing. And after a while, when I feel I'm ready, I just get projects out and trying. Uh, normally when I try, I work on a project, I'm starting with some drafts, I'm doing some drafts until I'm, I feel like I know where I'm going. I have a, like an idea of the, the what I want to do, uh, the characters, the colors and everything. And when it's all in my head, then I do a final draft. I go to inking. And uh, after inking, I scan my draw my drawings, 
uh, on the scanner. And after that, that's where I start to work on the computer. So normally uh, in the afternoons, I will do like the edits and color and photoshops and I work on that. And I try to, uh, I like at the end of the day to have something like finished so I can say, okay, this is done. And I can do like a little uh, X on my uh, like uh, things to do. And uh, yeah, and then I just start again the next day. Anthony is francophone and mostly works in French. So I needed to check. Are there opportunities to work in English here in our region? Do you ever get a chance to work in English? Uh, I didn't. Oh, maybe yes, once. I, I, I did like a little comic piece about permafrost and for an English um, university. It was to, uh, to summarize some, uh, some information about permafrost uh, in the Can- Canadian Great North. So it was great. It was in English, but the text was given out to me. So mostly I just did the drawings and like uh, put the English text in it. So that's maybe the, the only time. And of course, this, this podcast is a first for me. Very good. Uh, most of the students are bilingual, but they, some of them prefer to work in English. Would that limit them? Would that hold them back as an artist? Mm, I don't think so. I think. Uh, Particularly in comics, I think a lot of readers, they read both uh, English and French. And I have a few names uh, in my head of like a uh, comic artist that works in, Montre- in Montreal or even here in Quebec. And they work in English and that doesn't like keep them from getting uh, a public. Even sometimes like on the internet, they can give them like a greater range because they also... Uh, have uh, readers from all around Canada and the United States. So, no, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's much of a barrier. Yeah, of course, if you want to be published in uh, Quebec, there's a, like more, I, there's Drawn and Quarterly in Montreal, that's an English uh, language uh, editor, but otherwise, uh, most of them are French editors. So if you want, if you're looking to publish, of course, it's can, it can be great to also work in French, but uh no the I think the the scene in Quebec is very diverse, and if somebody was to go to the uh, Quebec comic festival with uh, english uh, English work, it will be well received so now I want you to talk to the high school students directly. What advice do you have for them? Well, I said it a bit earlier, but I think my my main advice is that I think. Growing up and starting in comics, uh, I I thought like uh, talent and uh, inspiration uh, had a lot to do with uh, success. But um, looking back and talking with a lot of other uh, artists, uh, I think that what's maybe the most important thing is um, is perseverance and uh, uh, practice. It's just like uh, working, uh, drawing, drawing a lot never stop drawing and that's the way you get better that's putting your work out there and of course like don't wait for your work to be great before uh, starting to work and put it out there because if you do that you might never end up doing anything so even if you're in the process of getting better and your work is still not like as perfect as you see it in your mind in your mind you have to create it and continue creating it I think all the artists we see out there today are the ones that just never stop creating and never stop believing in their work. And that's that's why what they do now is so great. And if maybe if you go back and you find their first uh, fanzine or their first little publication online, you will find like their drawing is not so great. But they they continued anyway. Thank you. One final question. Can you finish the sentence? My job is awesome because... Uh... I will say my job is awesome because I get to make a living doing one of the things I like most. Also, now, since maybe one year, two years, uh, I get more contracts so I can choose which one I want to work on. And that also allow me like to, uh, to work uh, on projects that I find important and to, uh, to give them, give visibilities to those uh, topics and subjects that I find important and to raise awareness for them. That's great, and, and it's, uh, I, I'm glad you shared a, a, 
an example of something where it's not just funny. Because of course, the first thing we think of of comics is funny, but the power of the uh, pictures yeah, goes absolutely. beyond just it's, funny. For so, me, comics wow. it's a it's a way of telling stories. It's not a, a type of stories. So you can tell all kind of stories with comics, as you can do with movie or literature. It just depends on the style of drawing you choose and the way of telling it. And that's our episode for this week. Thank you again to our guest, Anthony Chabonneau Grenier, for his valuable insights. We would also like to acknowledge the Government of Canada for funding this initiative. Join us next week for our talk with Sharon McLeod about nursing. This is the Pathways Podcast. Signing off. Until next time. <laughs>